thing is, is that, you know, at a higher rate now in the school system, more young black men and women are being removed from the school system upon integrating, you know, because certain things um, are looked upon from the perspective of a young black man or a young black woman um, to label them, to constantly keep us as uh, the guinea lambs of this educational society. There's nothing progressive about the educational system. The founders of the educational system were all racist. The educational system that exists today is still based off of a racist plane. It hasn't changed since its inception. It goes into playing into the hands of William Lynch. So if the educational system, if they're not coming out educationally astute about themselves, then it's a constant perpetuation of the same situation. So it's not giving uh, a way out or a way to freedom is really constantly and further enslaving them because it's not teaching them the, the avenues to come self-sufficient and independent. It's teaching them to incorporate into a company or a society or in a mass-produced corporate um, level job so that they can't become free or the people itself can't become free. I agree with both of you, but still, you know, the education system, they still teach you how to learn. And I mean, in terms of, let me say that differently. They teach you how to read. And then, uh, then through, the per, through, through the individual's own desire to uh, better themselves, you know, they can pretty much te teach themselves. Or is that too much to ask of the uh, America's uh, younger population? No, I don't think, I don't think that, um, um, well, basically, what I'm getting at is, yes, they teach you certain basic prerequisites of how to learn as being a human being, how to read and write and how to read signs and things of that nature. But the fundamental problem is, is that America talks about the individual, individual initiative, which is a good thing, which is a good thing when it's harnessed and it's, and it's put forward. But we all know that group politics, community politics rules everything. Um, if you look at historically at these countries where you had basically all kind of European powers fighting for each other, but somehow they were able to coalesce their power and create uh, wealth and power for themselves. That's something which Willie Lynch tried to do more importantly than anything. He wanted to divide and conquer. He wanted to make the, 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 the individual uh, person say, hey, well, I can look down upon that person who's working in the field, or I can look down upon that person who's working in the in, in the house. His whole message was divide and conquer. Yes, there's individual incentive that black people have always harnessed in this country, but we all know in a competitive society like that, group economics and group, group power is, uh, is, uh, is the most potent factor. But, you know, the time period that you're talking about when the countries were, well, they're always trying to, you know, become more powerful and, and, and richer, but during the time of slavery, the uh, countries uh, they were operating under a mercantilistic regime. Mm -hmm. And to a large extent, capitalism hadn't evolved in yet. And as they were, as these countries were sending out their explorers to bring back the riches of these lands, you know, back to the crown, um, and setting up colonies, you know, when England did that, and the folks that England put over here, and, and they realized that sending everything back to England, you know, wasn't the way to go and that they should have their own thing, you know, the Americans here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at, at that same period, that's when capitalism started evolving in. And true enough, all those things were set up to help, to, you know, for the government, but through time, it trickles down to the individual and, it, and the individual can have the same mindset as a government, you know, where he would do things to enrich himself you know, and support his family and, and the, the uh, selfish thing, you know, by, by um, uh, making himself better and getting the things that he wants, he inadvertently makes society better. Yeah, I, and I, I have no problem with that, but you look at the new immigrant population that's coming here. Their whole incentive, they're using the ploy of the individual thing that you're talking about, individual initiative to go out and achieve things uh, uh, based on their own self-initiative, what are, are they also doing? They're coalescing their power into black communities as well. If you look in our community, we see Laotian town, Chinatown, and everything else. 
they're building their base there because they know there's they're, they're more or less there's less competition in, in particular. There's a uh, uh, cheap housing in a sense of that nature. So it's not so much immigrant bashing, but it, it just shows you that what America is spreading the individual initiative. People are getting an idea when they come over here. Hey, we need to coalesce our community power. We need to set up big ethnic blocks in order to. Uh, perpetrate our our morals and values of where, wherever nation we may may come from. As the groups come into these black areas, they can't be blamed for doing that. I mean, a lot of, lot of uh, the gas stations, uh, whatever mom and pop stores, you know, blacks can own those stores too. And you know, you can't really do anything about people coming in. And our objective, our focus, is to strengthen the black community so that it can compete more effectively. And the whole thing about education, you know, as we were on just a moment ago, was um, I don't think you can, you can educate anybody of African American descent unless you first deal with William Lynch and the legacy that's been left uh, on an individual from that doctrine. Because otherwise, it's just like, um, we'll say spitting in the wind. Accurate? Well, I don't think that necessarily you have to educate them based off of Willie Lynch. Or no, what, no, what, no, what, what I'm talking about. Uh, the concepts of, of, you know, you have to remove those concepts by showing them the accurate achievements of the people throughout the history of time. When you constantly remove somebody and you tell them that they're nothing, that they're less than nothing, and then you give them nothing to operate as a base off of, then you're expecting a perpetual mentality of incrimination. But if you give them a base to operate from and strengthen them with, um, uh, from, a, from an innovative perspective, because many innovative strides have been made in this society by black people, and, but there's been a constant removing away from um, those inventions, those individuals, their achievements, if there's nothing there to give you a harness of power, to give you that energy to, to boost you, then you're still not gonna be boosted, even if I can read and write. The literacy rate in this country is very, very high. Illiteracy rate is very, very high. Very, very high. Very few people can accurately read and comprehend what it is that they have read. So the educational system has failed. But even though you take a country like Cuba, who has a 100% literacy rate, and then they get constant benefits. You have 100% uh, benefits from the government and things of this nature. If this, if this man is so bad in that country, maybe we need to take some of his teaching and learning and incorporate it into this system, and, and maybe it can help to overcome some of the constant things that are bringing this society down. Because you, you have beautiful buildings in this society, but the people are going to hell. Educationally, they're dysfunctional. If you, if you remove knowledge from the people, then you're expecting turmoil and chaos and the things that you're getting now. This is why you have police officers walking around with a, with a nightclub and a gun and a stun gun and, and pepper spray mace because they're really, we have delinquent, um, went so far delinquent in our mentality that we're really like beasts in the field. So it's, I mean, education has a, a very vital part to play upon that, but you can't expect somebody a teacher is only known by his students. Okay. Anything to add to that? Well, I, I, I just, I just want, wanted to say, uh, in, in particular, you know, um, this, this started from the Willie Lynch, but this was incorporated in the plantation, and as, and as the decrease of our numbers. Anytime there's a, there's a rise in somewhat of a black majority, in, in essence, there are rules and things that are set in place to keep that uh, keep us as a permanent numerical majority. Now, when you when you had mentioned before that no, we can't keep other people out. This is th th this is for sh uh, for sure. Even though the United States said we'll keep certain Haitians out, we'll keep certain Muslims out. But in essence, you know, we can't keep uh, certain people out. But the whole issue is that we're a planned minority. And as more and more immigrant, immigrant groups come in, they take on the same mentality that's been fed through this media that we have been fed historically, that black people are lazy, that we're criminally prone to violence, that we are irresponsible for our children. The only thing we can do is play basketball and dance. That's the only thing. So you see the, these things festering around and looked upon. And when we're trying to 
always incorporating, always trying to love someone, which we should do innately anyway, we're not getting anywhere because we see ourselves in this the state that Brother Tryon talked about, a state of perpetual uh, uh, slavery in, in, in essence where we don't have a foundation from, from where we stand. That's why the Willie Lynch plan is working so elegantly when they talk, talk about how culturally diverse America is, but black people are still catching hell. We're still a numerical minority. We're still economically deprived. Yes, we always had the individual initiative. We saw that after slavery during Reconstruction. We saw that uh, when we had our own communities during the 50s and 60s, had our own blanks, uh, excuse me, uh, banks and things of that nature. But somehow we've lost that, lost that past because we're so entwined about being respected and loved without looking back and saying, hey, we can be respected and loved, but we're going to have some economic and political power behind it too. The thing is that we don't understand it. We, uh, we have economic um, situations that take place in a society. Then you're going to have to have some type of level of defense. You know? And we have not been able to accurately defend the things that we have produced. So if you don't have defense, then someone is going to come in and take the things that you have produced. When you had Black Wall Street in Oklahoma, that the government of America bombed, you see? And then said that, you know, we can't achieve anything. But you come in and destroy that which we have achieved. And then you say, well, you know, you put a, um, a stereotypical image upon black people and a constant defaming characteristic. You know, you give in that situation and that, and that um, chain of thought to the whole world. And it's, and it's constant that the people come in and say, okay, well, we can thrive in the black community because we're constant consumers, you know? Everybody has to consume certain products and things of this nature, but we're a constant consumer. We're not trying to come out of any of the conditions that we're in. All of our companies that we have built are now owned by white in, uh, companies and white corporations and things of this nature. None of the companies that we really have that are major are in our hands anymore. Beatrice is gone. Johnson Publications is gone. BET is gone. Def Jam is gone. So we have to see what it is that we can accurately defend and stand up on and stop trying to be um, uh, so wanting to be accepted by an open enemy who really never cared about us in the first place.